who are, of course, well, single admin, who is a little bit over his head with all the players and yeah, it's tough. streams trying to organize what's going on. But I have maybe got that game available. Mm. I'll try and let you know shortly. I think I think we're going to be jumping into that unless something pops up. Um, but, we'll, of course, we'll see Jack G um, play a little little game or two. That would be nice. I'd like to see Jack G here in the European scene. We're actually uh, we're actually very fortunate to have uh, Jack G over here in the scene because, you know, there, there was that period where, yes, he won a GSL a long, long time ago, and then we didn't really hear too much from him. Mm -hmm. But he's kind of, you know, his resurgence has begun. He is here to try and perform very well. He's already qualified for Sao Paulo, which we'll be casting in a few weeks' time. Uh, and now he looks to qualify for Cologne, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Switzerland, really. It's not the same distance as Brazil, but it's just as luxurious, I imagine. Okay, so the game we are going to jump into is Kane versus Bly, then. Ah, nice. So we will jump into that, um, because the, the Jack G game is about to start, and I think that may be a little bit one-sided. Um, Maybe. <laughs> hi, hi. Okay. Okay, so, all right. So we're going to have this Kane versus Bly game. Best of three, of course. Let me just, yeah, you've asked map order. Mm -hmm. This should be good. Okay, so Frost is our first map, and then we're just trying to confirm which ones are the next. Revolver was Kane's previous opponent, because he's in the lobby as well. Mm -hmm. So he wants to watch along. Not sure, Bly's pick next. So, okay, so that means that Frost was Kane's pick. Uh, here for mm -hmm. ZVZ. So wanting to play with a little bit of a bigger map here. Have you uh, managed to check out many ZVZs? Uh, as of late, yes, and we're still in the muta versus muta thing for a lot of it, I feel, uh, especially in the European scene. Have you been able to watch too much? Yeah, I've watched quite a bit, um, played quite a bit as well. It's very similar to how it always has been, to be yeah. honest. There's um, the standard openings that we see quite often, whether it be the nine pool, the eight pool, the bailing first, the zergling speed builds. There's a lot of different openings to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, then it usually goes into the phase of who gains an advantage versus who doesn't, whether the early aggression was successful or not. If it's equal, then some players like to take risks and try to gain an advantage. Some players like to go up to Mueller. Some players do still play Queen double uh, double evolution chamber. I was going to say double forge, double evolution chamber for double upgrades. There's actually quite a few different styles um, still available to play. On a map like Frost, I'd be expecting probably, I mean, the most likely play is, is Roach Heavy yeah. uh, once again. But uh, of course, it really depends on player style. Maybe they do prefer Mulus, maybe they do want to use Mulus. Um, towards the later stages of the game, especially because once you do upgrade or go for Roaches, you upgrade Roaches, mm -hmm. which of course share the same upgrades as Swarm Hosts. Uh, and they have been coming out quite a lot recently in the games yeah. I have seen and played myself. Uh, and that could be something we see here today between these two players. But to be honest, I haven't seen Kane or Bly play a Zerg versus Zerg. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they both use today. I think there's two interesting things I've seen recently in ZVZ, uh, which is one, predominantly on Frost, if you get lucky with your earlier Overlord Scout. Mm -hmm. And you somehow, you know, you're, if your opponent goes hatchery first, for example, you can try and wiggle in there with the Overlord, see if there is actually gas, and maybe take advantage on that if there is no gas. And then the second thing that I saw that was quite interesting, I think it might have been during Pro League, was a heavy Queen Roach style with Nidus Worm against an opponent that he felt was really, really going to go Mutalist. Yeah, this is something which TLO has done many a time, yeah. uh, trying to go for these kind of timings. They do work. I think another player that's used it quite a lot in the Korean scene would be a player like Symbol. Uh, so mm. there's definitely a lot of different branches you can go down when trying to play Zerg versus Zerg for sure. Uh, of course, Bly is kind of a veteran in the European scene, has been around forever. Uh, the Ukrainian Zerg player who's been traveling to many different tournaments, whether it be Intel Extreme Masters, Dreamhacks, Home Story Cups. You've seen him a lot uh, in these tournaments. But Kane, on the other hand, when it comes to European tournaments, hasn't really been in Europe that long. Is working, living, playing with the My Insanity team mm -hmm. uh, in Switzerland and is trying to make it work over here. He's obviously a very successful North American Zerg player, now come to the European scene. Is he going to be able to qualify for one of the premier tournaments in Europe here? Of course, the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, which is happening in the next few weeks' time. And he goes up against this veteran in Bly who's been to a DreamHack final before. Yeah, he He's has. been to multiple, you know, round of 16 top eight finishes across various different European tournaments. It was Bucharest, wasn't it? That yeah, last year. And Nurture was in the finals. That's right. Yeah. That was a tough draw for him. Nurture was really good in ZVZ. 
Uh, but anyway, guys, we can jump into game number one now as we have our ZVZ underway. Cross positions here on Frost, so way harder to scout out with that initial overlord. As we have spawning up to the top right, Mr. MI Insanity's Kane. And down to the bottom left hand corner, we have Acer Bly. Acer Bly, of course, in the voted most uh, dominant, successful, popular, however you want to call it, team of 2013, Team mm -hmm. Acer who battled out against the likes of Team Liquid and Evil Geniuses, and they were voted up there, and they absolutely should have been. They were dominant within the leagues that they played. Oh, yeah. A fantastic lineup with the likes of Innovation and MMA and Scarlet. Fantastic team. And as we see, we have Blight, who's opened up with the Temple here, playing aggressive from the get-go on Frost. What is Kane going to do? Kane, a previous Shoutcraft America champion, and one of the best that America has to offer, Absolutely. to be honest with you. Um, and now, obviously, living in Europe and trying to make it here. Um, and, you know, for some of the American players, that could be a while. I think Europe has a very, very strong scene right now. Extremely strong. Uh, so, moving over here to uh -huh. take advantage of that. All good. And this looks like that Bly is going for the build, uh, as mm. mentioned just now. You know, one of the builds that you could see, which is the fast bailing build. Yeah. He doesn't know where his opponent has spawned, and that overlord on the right-hand side will give him a bit of information, just kind of telling him that his opponent's on the other side of the map, uh, to the top. But we do have a pull first from Kane, not a hatchery first here, and then we'll be going for his hatchery next. Hmm. I'm not too sure how this is going to fare. It's obviously going to come down to control like it does a lot in the early stages of a Zerg versus Zerg. Kane hasn't been overly greedy. And to be honest, not getting the gas can work okay for him. It means he's going to have a you know, much more mineral-focused defense, which is actually what you need against this, yeah. rather than trying to use gas. Because you're never going to have speed in Indeed. time to deal with this. You're never going to have banelings really in time to deal with this. So it's going to be a mineral defense only. Obviously, the gas would help out for the counterattack. To get speed after, to get bellings after. So he's gotten got the best defense possible, um, or the best setup to have the best defense possible. And Bly, lucky, lucky, has decided to go all the way to the top right. Well, he spotted the Overlord down to the bottom left. Oh, right. Sorry. So okay, sorry. it's a perfect opportunity for him to know exactly where his opponent oh, is. Kane's seen six links really early out mm. here. This should obviously prompt him to build a lot more and to continue, even build a spine, to be honest, Oop. upon seeing the Bailings morph inside his main base. There it is. Yeah. He needs to make sure he holds off. As long as he doesn't lose all his drones, he's in fantastic position. That's kind of the key here. He can lose his natural, that's fine. Yes. Don't lose your drones because he's, he's leading by seven at the moment. Can be difficult with this amount of Banelings morphing in, but at the same time, he's got to focus properly with his queens and that spine crawler once it ends up popping. Oh! Banelings, oh, they kill off all of the Zerglings during that. Yeah, whoopsie daisy. Oh, and he was already starting working on that spine crawler. This is a big, big problem here for Kane. He has to throw down another spine, tries to split up his drones. He's already brought a lot of them low. Not There's still bad. a lot of Zerglings here. And the spine's almost uh, finished. And it, ah, what's the drone count? What's the difference? Try to get it. Try to get it. He kills three workers. The spine does end up falling. Drone count. nine. 12 to 9. Hmm. He's got two hatcheries, remember? The queen does not want to die here. A second one pops out. Great position with that queen. And he should be able to deflect this for now. Oh, oh, oh he doesn't lose the queen. One oh. hit point. Oh, that was close. Super, super close. And Even. now he just needs to keep on focusing on minerals. Do not try to tech up here. Just get more drones, more queens. That's going to be the defense here. His overall needs to spot his opponent not having a natural. Yeah. And during all that, you know, the fact that he has the natural himself, it puts him so far yeah, ahead absolutely. now. Absolutely. And Bly's going to get speed here. And then he's going to take out a gas. He's going to build nothing but Zerglings yeah. to try and break him. He knows he has to break him. And like I said, all Kane needs to do, focus on minerals. I wouldn't even take an assimilator. Try to catch back up with your economy. And to be honest, his economy is in really good shape at the moment. Oh, yeah. With two extra drones, he probably doesn't even need any more drones. This is where the next 150 is a queen on the natural. Exactly right. Queen on the natural now. And to be honest, the next 100 is a spine crawl on the natural. Especially because he's seen his opponent does not have a natural hatchery. Exactly. These links have given him such valuable information. And he even sees the spawning pool whirring away. So he knows, hey, speed's on the way. You yeah. can't be really investing anywhere else. I would build another spine here. Yeah, All definitely. you've got to do is defend the natural. He's just going back to lava inject a couple of times with his queens. Uh, and he's got his third queen. I Whoa. still would build another spine. Yeah, I mean, six more drones are on the way here for Bly. I think he realizes, well, my opponent has seen everything that I'm doing now. I can't make this work. If he is reading it as well as he should be doing, yeah. I can't make it work, so I have to expand. Okay. 
And Kane has not seen the expansion. Did see the drone kind of going down there. Would like oh. to see if the expansion is there or not. He's going to get it. He's going to see. Okay, good. So now upon seeing it, he realizes that, yes, the likelihood of Zerglings is still there because you do float a lot of minerals when you have a decent drone count and trying to build Zerglings. But from this mission, he, he was comfortable to skip the second spine, which I would have definitely built to make sure I was safe because that's the only way you can really die. Uh, but he got in there. He saw the extra gas being taken. He's seen the drone count is nice and high, mm -hmm. which means Kane builds nine drones, or however many. Okay, that's a lot of drones. A lot of drones. <laughs> he, well, he will want to go up to as many as possible. Yeah. Double, double evolution chamber, and Kane is in a fantastic position to win this game as long as he doesn't make any really crucial mistakes. Because what we'll see, two upgrades come out, probably roach upgrades. I'd be surprised if you went zerglings. You don't really need zerglings. Two roach upgrades coming out. Drone all the way up till he gets full saturation across two bases. Throw down the roach warren soonish, just in case there is an attack. Mm -hmm. Get roach speed and just go over the other side and kill him. Exactly. There's almost nothing that Bly can do here with the lack of I income that he has. I mean, only just now his natural has popped. Yes, he's getting Leia himself. I won't be surprised if Bly tried to get Mutalisks out somehow, some way. Yeah, but he's got to take a risk and yeah. some, some choice that he's going to go for here. Exactly. Whatever that is. I don't know what it is, but... I mean, the choices that he has present, I suppose, is Mutalisks um, because he hasn't started Evolution Chambers. And to be honest, I think that's kind of the only thing he could go for. Yeah, it's... He's, I mean, uh, if he tries to go Roach or Hydras, he doesn't have the upgrades. He doesn't have the economy to keep up with Kane, who would be going for that anyway. So I guess Mutalisks is really the only thing he can do in this position. And that's probably what we'll see the Spire come down, as you say. Yeah, that's uh, it's a difficult position here for Bly. I mean, Bly... A hundred, a hundred percent, two hundred percent even. Let's go two hundred percent. He knows how far he is behind. So yeah. he's somehow got to eke this out. Uh, but Kane, equally, he knows. So he's actually sending out a drone for a third base. Because, I mean, why not? He He's so, so uh, well established right yeah. now. Yeah, all you've got to do in this position is Kane is build a lot of roaches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's it's kind of simple from this position. Um, because your opponent just doesn't really have a lot to deal with it. And to be honest... I mean, if he just keeps on building roaches, does not allow anything to break his natural links or whatever, even if Mutalisks come out, there, there won't be enough of them, I fear, to push back the roaches. And through that time of having to deal with the high roach count, which we're probably going to see out from Kane, we will see uh, some kind of anti-air thrown down, whether it be the Hydralisk down or Infestation Pit, and it is the Infestation Pit chosen, as the Overseer does go in. Poke. And there he's the spy, so he knows exactly what his opponent's doing. So. Just build up a lot of units here, and well, you know what to do. Crush, man, crush. It's gonna be it's gonna be difficult here for Bly. Uh, has to ha make miracles where he can. I mean, the Zerglings have poked forwards, and they saw the third base. Um, but aside from that, he also saw the Roach count as well, with plus one uh, one finishing, and you know even the Glory Constitution about to finish as well. Kane's playing actually really, really safe. Just sitting back, waiting for Pathogen Glands to finish. And yeah, spores being put down. Yeah. But he's, and he's he, fine. Uh, he didn't try to... I mean, a lot of people would have tried to go for the attack here, but he has chosen to build up a few more drones. Mm. So he's not going to go challenge the Mutalisk going over there uh, with the Roaches. He's actually just going to um, sit back, get Infestors, and wait for the... Ro uh, wait for the hi uh, I can't even get the right name out. The Mutalisk to come <laughs> to him. Yeah, uh, a little bit of a run by here with some Zerglings. Uh, a few more amassing out off the off the creep here. So Kane doesn't see those just yet. Oh, now he does. Uh, but there's really not a whole lot these links can do as long as Kane's on his toes. Yep. And, uh, you know, Kane still does Ooh. maintain that lead of his. Yeah, good queen positioning. Not going to get by, yeah. by at all. So 30 meters coming out. They're not really going to be able to do that much in this game. To be fair to Bly, it's a good number. Yeah, uh, it's a great number. He, I mean, he was cutting corners left and right yeah, to oh get yeah. the Mulis to the count this high. I mean, Kane could have tried to kill him early on and probably would have succeeded through the corners that were cut. Yeah. But Blind Turn knew that, so he, it, like... Yeah. He, he just tries. He knows that he was at such a disadvantage. His if the Mules can find ways to do damage, then, you know, great, great. Yeah. But, like I said, the spores infestors, and like, so. Bleh. And these are trapped. There's going to be two more fungals available. There's transfuses available. There's roaches to support the queens. One more. Oh, there's no more fungals left. Okay. So he's already picked off three or four mutilists there. Yeah, very, very nicely done. Uh, plus one weapons actually starts with Bly here to com uh, like help out these mutilists yeah. where he can. But, I mean, with a few more infestors coming down, if he wants to get those out as well and them amassing yeah. energy from this point on, it's going to be very difficult for I mean, Bly to find any angles. Uh, he's building Bailings as well here. And I'm not sure where, where are they, Bailings? They're on the right-hand oh, side. Okay, so what Bly's going to try to do to get back into this game more efficiently is... 
If these four banners can detonate into the entire of the mineral line, it slows down his opponent's economy and income quite a bit. Mm, and he's actually going to wiggle on through wow, here. Wow, nice little move. Oh, very nicely done. Nice little move there. 19 kills in total. Nice move. And he actually gets the spore crawler mm. and leaves his base a little bit vulnerable, but he's got to be careful of the fungal growth. Oh! He's, you know, he, you can't... You can't argue that. I mean, he has to go for these kind of moves, <laughs> yeah, doesn't he? Yeah. And he does get out with quite a few of them, but he has to pull these moves off. So he's got to take risks. You know, uh, for the five extra worker kills that he got just then, not too bad, actually. Not yeah. too bad there by Blight. But look at the supply counts right now. I mean, Kane, with the roaches, with the hydralisks that he's about to get out as well, Bly would be hard-pressed to kill any full-on frontal assault. Oh, uh, where the hydralisks? They're about to pop. If you can get one more fungal, they may be out in time. And he does have energy for that one more fungal. Oh, where the Very hydralisks? Nice. And those Hydras do close oh, the... Oh, if only had one oh. more fungal, every single one of those would have gone down. Interestingly enough, the Mutalisks did kill off one of the Infestors that did have energy for fungal. So, a yeah. little bit of a clutch move, but... but the the yeah. big thing is now, what happens when Kane pushes off the map? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how can you really stop this? And I don't think you can. He doesn't have Bailing Speed to connect into the Hydras. He doesn't have a high enough Mutalisk count to stop these plus two attack and plus one Carapace Hydralis either. And there's no way he can counterattack because the Infestors and some units has been left at home so this is this could be the nail in the coffin you look at the supply 181 Ooh. oh miss fungal there yeah really Ooh, actually he's challenging the, the hydralis here and there's not all of them together yeah that was really strong keeping the distance and tickling away at the roaches initially but then you know with those numbers was able to do quite a lot still doesn't have energy for fungals they're reinforcing hydras as you said there's not that many of them yeah but they are more and more coming out another nine the infestors are going to regenerate energy again soon i think for ken muscular augments can't finish qu uh, quickly enough he yeah. needs that so he can get those hydralisks over there to deal with this but that mutilus count is being broken down yeah and emergency spines coming in because he realizes he has to defend this but kane who's been able to really ride an advantage from the very get-go of this game yeah is looking to finally close this off it's going to take a long time to kill these roaches there's a lot of hydralisks about to come over the investors are regenerating their energy nice moves here from kane a decent effort from Bly to try to get back into this one yeah, but it was rush. always going to be very difficult. To be honest, I think a lot of players would say it was almost impossible to come back from this. Yeah, it, it's been a long road for Bly and uh, hasn't really come to a, pivot, a point at this point uh, at this time. But I mean, this greatest spire is now on the way of somehow for Bly to try something. But yeah, all downhill from here. Uh, it was for quite a while. Bye bye. <laughs> Poor little queen dies off as well. And I mean, the Mutalisks do end up cleaning this up. It's not really the biggest, uh, but there you go. There you go, GG. Kane, convincing win there for quite a while in that game. Yeah. Nicely nicely executed. Nice, nice game. Good nice defense. Game. Early Indeed. on. Just game one there, that best of three. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we'll be looking to jump into the next map immediately here. But a big risk there from Bly to open up uh, with such a build. And it was deflected. But there could have been chances if Kane had opened up, for example, Hatchery extractor to get some gas and then spawning pool could have been a different story but his opening did help him out he didn't take unnecessary gas income when he didn't need gas to defend it so it was all set up quite nicely for him a little bit rough on the defense initially but it was enough to deflect his opponent yeah, certainly so uh, and on a map like frost it can in zvz it can be a little bit easy to get very economically uh, focused in your mind and you yeah, know maybe take yeah. a gas and take even hatchery that's first. the risk that bly went for because exactly you know, you, sometimes you do get quite an easy victory there but kane didn't try greedy early on to try to get a strong economy mm. set up okay uh, and bly for the longest time he's been one of the players that i want to say in the european scene he doesn't really conform to normality uh in mm -hmm. any matchup really so i yeah. think you know yeah. kane Having been on the European ladder for quite a bit now, uh, is probably used to the idea that Bly is not the most conventional of players, and that's why he opens up a bit more safely. Yeah, Bly definitely has his own unique style. I remember he used to be going two base hydralisk a lot of the time in Zerg versus Protoss, which is very unique and not something we'd yeah. see too often. Uh, and of course, likes to just play his own game, very aggressive, uh, very unique. What is he going to bring to the table going into this next map? Because he has to win this, of course. If he doesn't, he finishes very early on in this Inset Stream Masters Qualifier in the round of 32. If this is the round of 32, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And we would be moving on to the round of 16, getting close to the top four, because four spots are available from this qualifier, which lead in to tomorrow's main Stage 2 qualifier. Of course, this is Stage 1 going into Stage 2 tomorrow. This is 
basically to qualify for the main qualifier tomorrow. And we're about to get underway. I just need to join off you. Sorry, a little bit slow here because I'm talking. That's okay. All right. Well, uh, Polar Knight is our second map. Uh, and for me and ZVZ, there are two two main things that happen here. As aside from the earlier shenanigans, I'm talking more about the mid game here. One, it's it can be fantastic for mutilist play, just with the amount of angles that you have on both the main and natural. Mm -hmm. But also because of that, I have seen a lot of like big, quick transitions from the early to mid game where you're just like roaches, 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 and trying to bust before even that that can even occur. Yeah. So those are the two big things. Uh, anything else that you can really, really springs to mind here for Polar Knight for Not you? Not really. I mean, Zerg versus Zerg. To be honest, the sizes of the maps uh, kind of help some players to decide against the norm with these earlier pools. Mm. But overall, in Zerg versus Zerg, I think it's. I think it plays out rather similar on all maps. Yeah. I really don't think that maps make a massive difference in this matchup, apart from, as mentioned, sometimes the earlier choices. All right. Well, let's jump into game number two. Kane currently leads 1-0 over Acer Bly. And we do have the Acer representative up to the north. He is indeed Bly. And down to the south, we have My Insanity's Kane. Okie doke. What is going to happen here between these two players? I think now that Bly... Especially Bly being, as mentioned earlier, he's quite experienced when it comes to these tournaments and these qualifiers. I don't think he'd risk it for a biscuit in the second game. I don't think he'd try to do something risky again. Yeah. But then again, it is Bly, so he's already up to 10 supply. If he doesn't build an overlord here, then, well, I think we know where we're going Ooh, with hello. this. Oh, okay. Oh. I was going to say. That was getting close. <laughs> uh, risk it for a biscuit, man. I've never heard this. No? It's brilliant, though. Thank you very much. I'm going to use it Do every day. Do you want that biscuit or not? I, I like biscuits. Although if Americans are tuning in, look, right? Biscuits, they're not what you think they are, okay? Biscuits are cookies. At least, yeah, they are cookies, right? To them. I think so. I don't yeah. know. What are cookies then? Uh, well, we don't have cookies, right? Although the Americanisms have carried over quite strongly into England as of late. Well, what, what, what in England then, what is a chocolate chip cookie if it's not a cookie? Uh, it's not a biscuit. Yeah. To be fair, in England, I would never say a chocolate chip biscuit. That's just weird. Mm. So you would always say chocolate chip cookie. Damn it. Okay. Maybe I've proved myself wrong completely. I, don't know. <laughs> I was just thinking, because <laughs> I, I usually, when I go for a coffee or something in England, I usually get a cookie with it. Yeah. And I was thinking, what other word would it be? Maybe. May uh, yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Cheers, Sean. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. I, mean, I don't know. I was intrigued. I thought there was some word I didn't know, actually, more so than... Oh, well. Thinking something else. Hey, Bly, he's going to go for his hatchery, so no craziness from him. Yeah, yeah, just a regular opening from him, like 15 spawn and pull, 15 hatchery. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the other hand, it was Kane that took the greedier build. I think he kind of played the mind game quite well in this sense. As, as described early on, I didn't think Bly would do something to risk it for that biscuit or risk it for that cookie early on to try to do something aggressive again. And I think Kane was like, yeah, you probably won't either. And so he decided to go hatchery first, then extractor, then spawn and pull, which is a rather late spawn and pull here. In Zerg vs. Zerg, this is the latest spawn and pull you can get. Mm. Um, you never go three hatchery before, of course, because you just instantly die. It's way, way, way too greedy. Um, but this is a good setup for him. He's going to have, um, of course, Zergling speed nice and early. He can have uh, an aggressive setup much earlier than Bly can. It's just a generally better build. Yeah, and Bly, seeing that it was indeed that hatchery uh, down and planted quite quickly with his overlord, means that he can very, very comfortably poke him with his overlord and see that there was that gas down, etc. Meanwhile, Kane. Got the opportunity to as well with his overlord, yeah. but had to shoo out of there a bit quicker because the uh, spawning pool was first and yeah, we both, would be out quicker. Both players know exactly where they are in this game. When it comes to the openings that they've chosen, Kane knows he's ahead, Bly knows that he's a little bit behind in this game. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is all going to change very, very shortly because at this level, an advantage or disadvantage is very small. I oh, mean, yeah. If you build four lings and the other guy builds a couple of drones and those four lings don't do anything, maybe the advantage swings already. But what we're seeing from Kane, he is going to use the faster gas income for, with his faster zerg speed to throw into a bailing nest, and most likely from this position is going to be aggressive. I'd be surprised if he wasn't uh, aggressive from this standpoint. Bly, on the other hand, has not chosen to go for his bailing nest yet, which 
is kind mm. of a little bit dangerous for him. Yeah. You cannot really fight Zerglings and Banelings with just Zerglings unless you have a few Spines and Queens extra than you would do normally. He's chosen to go straight for Lair. And as we can see, Kane's decided to go 22 Zerglings and Bly is going to find it very, very difficult to hold on against the Canadian. Yeah, he certainly is. This queen does try and shoo away these two zerglings. Well, the zerglings That's not gonna happen. They gonna will get, see it. They're gonna get quite fast information. He sees yeah. it, and now is the time where I panic. I actually go, "Oh, damn!" Damn is the word. He cancels something. I don't know what it was, but he did. And now he's trying to build a wall. He knows he's in trouble. And to be honest, I think he's. I think he might be dead. He may be. There's another evolution. Ooh, yeah, just a second before, he but can kill that before exactly. it finishes, and he's gonna have to create the Great Wall of Evos. Yeah. And that's not gonna happen here. It's gonna be very, very difficult. Breaks on through, gets on to one queen. Actually, a few links already die to one Baneling. This is a very, very well executed build here by Kane. But it's not a massive attack from Kane. It's only those 22 Zerglings. Yeah. He's only gaining a lead and then droning up himself behind it. So, oh. yes, he Bly probably would have been dead if they had continued on because there isn't any Baneling's or anything to defend. But he's actually getting a layer himself, taking up himself, and just taking a lead, not taking the win. Yeah, it's it's very, very strong play here by Kane to just kind of seal yourself a win if you're able to do some damage with these. And the, the links have done damage. They forced a lot of links. They killed a few workers. They killed the queens, yeah. uh, which is a big, big thing here in ZBZ. Not having two queens against your opponents, actual two themselves, yeah. so much more production. And Kane is guaranteeing his lead by building two additional bailings and a couple of extra zerglings to make sure any form of counterattack isn't possible here from Bly. And throughout this little attack into that defense that Bly tried to set up, there is a five worker difference, a queen and lava advantage in favor of Kane, and a tech advantage in favor of yeah. Kane. He's put himself in a great position. And Bly has no clue about the lair, he doesn't know about the spire. The lings are going to try and break through again here. Bly is scrambling for this defense and does have enough zerglings out yeah. to probably hold on, but then has no proper transitionary yeah. method. But those weren't drones that he was trying to build to catch yeah. back up to Kane. They were zerglings. Now the drone difference is even larger than it was before. This is really tough here for Bly. Uh, Bly, as you mentioned, with the two Zerglings, had a, a good read on those links. Um, yeah. I was curious as to whether Kane was going to try and push this Overlord away with the Queen before those Zerglings were going to head out for him. But, I mean, by the time those links got in anyway, it was it was fine. He's just looking to take his third base. And the difference uh, between these two players now, it, well, the first thing that's the, the, the most similar between them both, they are going for the same tech choice. They're both going for the Mutalist here. They've both chosen the Spire. But when you're both playing the same unit type, and a player is going to clearly have an advantage when it comes to the count and the speed that the mule has come out, you're going to have a hard time. Oh, yeah. And Bly is going to have to pull some magic roundabout moves with Zerglings, you know, run bys, exactly. uh, snipes of hatchery, snipes of queens. It's going to be very, very difficult for him to play this game. Especially since, once again, his wall might get broken here. And he, look, I mean, he's just having to commit so much of that minerals that he would want to use to that transition, as you might mention before, yeah. to the Lings, which he doesn't want to be doing right now because <laughs> the queens are already on, uh, sorry, the, the mutalists are already on the way for Kane. Yeah, and Kane's ramping up the pressure because usually at this point you don't need to build drones, right? Exactly. Why? You, you've saturated, uh, you, you've fully saturated two bases. Your third isn't ready. So you just use that lava to build units for the time being. And he's using those units to be aggressive and put the pressure onto his opponent. He'll start drone production now because his hatchery is close to finishing. So he can actually get the drones over there as the hatchery finishes and mine from it as the hatchery finishes. It's perfectly well timed. And throughout this, he's got map control because he has a high unit count. He's going to be start sniping overlords. He's going to prevent his opponent from taking a third base. But Bly is doing as mentioned. Cheeky little run bys and snipes are things that can get back him into this game. And um, killing this hatchery or forcing a cancel is exactly what he needs. Uh, there's but a lot of links. Exactly, there's a lot of links and mutalisks to try and shut that down. Oh. I think he will be able to clean it up. So, nice. very, very nice defense here by Kane. And Bly right now is supply blocked. He was trying to take a third base with a drone, but he just doesn't have the money to do everything that he really wants to. Yeah. Another nine mutalisks on the way for Kane. And this is where you probably, as Kane, just leave quite a few Zergans and Bailings around that third. But also, you've got to be wary of the Mutalisks. The hatchery oh, yeah. is low already. And with the Mutalisks that he has out, it's not going to be just Zergans. The threat is the Mutalisks as well. Absolutely needs to get that hatchery if he wants to stay in this game. And the Lings, as well as the Mutalisks, are just going to push Bly away. And now his army supply is dwindling yeah. in number in comparison to Kane. Any head-on fight now? Kane wins. I mean, yeah. he was going to win anyway. It's so simple because he has the high Mutalisk count by seven, and seven's a lot. 
And he even finds the third base. These Zerglings, will they be able to deny it in time? Doesn't look like it. So, But he still does quite a bit of damage to leave it yeah. more vulnerable later on. And if you look at this right now, look at the income tab between both of them. There's a 350 gas difference between Ooh. the both, which means for every minute that ticks by on the clock in the bottom left, that's an extra three Mutalisks, basically. Three and a half that Kane gains. So the longer the game goes on, that's three and a half, that's seven, ten and a half, 40 Mutalisks in the next couple of minutes. Gonna be the difference between them. Bly has to do something soon, otherwise it's just way gonna get out of control. And to be honest, it really is already out of control, and I'm not really sure how he can find a way to get back in. Yeah, and well, there was no windows in terms of the upgrades there. Both of them also start their plus one weapons at the same time, just as those carapaces finish up. But it's, as you said, it's all about the numbers here. As Kane, he's just sharking around. He's playing it patiently once again, not really taking any uh, crazy, crazy engagements. But if he wants to, I mean, he can just fly over here with the Mutalisks, deny the third base uh, quite happily. He even has a lead in the Lings and Banelings as well. Yeah, a lead in every aspect of this. And you can see the supply difference between the both of them. Buy a little bit supply block to even more supply block now with the overloads Ouch. going down left and right. And Kane can turn around and fight this too. I, I think he's got more Mutalisks there than his opponent. It looks kind of close from a distance. But overall, he's picking off the third on the right-hand side. So it's not looking good for Bly, is it? Mm, certainly not. I mean, the Mutalisk counts are actually very even in this yeah, location specifically. But, I mean, the Lings, they're the ones that are really causing havoc right now. And, I mean, uh, there's nothing that Bly has to contest this yeah. at all. And uh, with the reinforcements coming in, which are always going to come in much, much faster here for Kane. He's going to take out the Mutalisk in the sky, which is where they are. There you go. GG. Kane is able to take the series 2-0. to zero. That was another brilliant Apolloism there. Thank you very much I'm for really that. really good at those. <laughs> <laughs> and that means Kane moves on, guys. Good stuff. Good games from Kane. Uh, really, really deflecting Bly's style quite well in game number one and just really destroying him game number two as well. Fantastic games from the Canadian. And for the first time, outside of zone streams and stuff and the international scene, well, the European scene, should I say, in touch stream masses, dream hack, hopefully future, uh, future home story cups. Ah, uh, yeah. We get to see him do well. That would be nice indeed. So he moves on. Let's take a quick look at the bracket if we can. Actually, we can bring that up on screen as well, just to give you a little bit of an update as to what's going on. As you can see, up in the round of 32, Protoss has advanced on over Slivko. Uh, is now going to be playing Zazu. Um, let's have a look. Weak is Verdi, uh, and changed his name a while ago. And every time I ask him, is that you, Verdi? He's like, who is Verdi? But it's actually Verdi, so don't believe the hype. Uh, and then Zoka, who recently left ATN, is going to be playing him. That's a really good PvP, actually, because uh, Verdi, or Weak's PvP, is pretty good at the moment. Um, let's have a look what else. Jack G is playing against Chubbs. What else do we have going on? I've Zerg Pal. Patience has already advanced over Pommy, uh, who was actually able to take out Showtime. So, uh, good show there by Pommy, but mm -hmm. Patience advances on. Any other results? Not a whole lot right now. Paranoid and Tefl have to play one another. That's a little bit unfortunate for our Polish players having to meet in the round of 32. Uh, but not too much else. Not too much else going on at the moment. Okay.